Also, Malik Yawmuddin, Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in. You alone we worship and to you alone we turn for help. God Almighty told us to uh, uh, show him the submission, full submission, that him alone we worship. We don't worship anyone else. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah means much more that I will not worship except Allah. It means that I will not worship except Allah. And I will not hope except from Allah. And I will not ask except Allah. And I will not complain except to Allah. And I will not love except Allah and what Allah loves. And I will not dislike except what Allah dislikes. So, la ilaha illallah becomes the core of my faith. You alone we worship and to you alone we turn for help. So we don't need the, seek the help of anyone except Allah. He taught you how to seek his bounties and what to ask, how to invoke Allah. Guide us to the straight path. Which path? The path, the, the, the good path, the right path in this life or in the hereafter? In both of them. You have to be guided to the path in this life in order to be guided to the path in the hereafter. And then you, you confirm that it is the path of the righteous. Surat al an'amta alayhim. The path of the righteous whom you bestowed on them your favor. Hmm? Not the path of those who, in, who incurred your anger. Not the path of those who have gone astray. Some people you think that Allah here talks about Jews and Christians. Excuse me. Allah talks to you. Giving you examples of the people who were given the book before you. Those who have seen the truth and they did not embrace it. Where incur, incur the anger of Allah. So if you do the same, you will incur the anger of Allah too. So those stories are not to entertain you before you sleep. No, those are examples given to you to benefit from them. And same thing, those who went astray, if you go astray like them, you will also be in hellfire. Amen. And then we choose a short surah. And we recite it. And we contemplate on it. Contemplation. So you see, the khushu'ah is increasing in your heart. The khushu'ah or the reverence of Allah, the consciousness of Allah is increasing in your heart. So you need to show Allah some more khushu'ah by adding to this verbal khushu'ah some physical khushu'ah. So you say, Allahu Akbar, and you bow down in ruku'ah. When you are bowing down, you start saying, Subhana Rabbi al -Azim. Glory be to my Lord, the greatest. Glory, glory be to my Lord, the greatest. While you are bowing down, humbling yourself to Him. Humbling yourself to Him. And then you rise and you say, Sami'a Allahu liman hamidah. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. What does it mean? It means Allah hears to those who... Uh, praise him who thank him O oh Allah Rabbana wa lakal hamd to you belong all the praise who's talking to who here there's a great sheikh called Ali Tantawi he said it's as if that the khushu'ah which is the spirit of prayer is incarnating in you and talking to you with your own tongue telling you the good news Allah hears at this moment to those who praise him. So very happily and quickly you speak with your own tongue and you say, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Oh Allah, to you belong all the praise. To you, all the praises are to you. And then you say, Allahu Akbar, and you prostrate on the floor. Putting your nose and your forehead, the signs of your dignity, your forehead and your nose, on the floor, prostrating for him, saying, Subhana Rabbi al A'la, glory be to my Lord, the highest. When you are at the lowest point, 
prostrating on the floor, putting your nose and your forehead on the floor, in the ground, in the dust for him. Humbling yourself to him. To Allah belongs all the power and glory. So, من كان يريد العزة فلله العزة جميعا. Tell me what other position can give you this can gives you can give you the sense of humbleness more than sujood, more than putting your nose and your uh, 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 forehead on the floor. Than this, actually, it is the most difficult thing for any convert is to start by destroying the. The, the arrogance in himself. That's exactly what Malcolm X said one day. He said, the most difficult thing for me when I embraced Islam was to destroy the arrogance in myself. You have to destroy this arrogance because if you seek glory and power, to Allah belongs all the glory and power. If you humble yourself to Allah like that, no one will be able to humiliate you later on. You will always have the glory and power of Allah because you are now praying the prayer of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, The prayer that used to comfort him. Not the prayer that used to pray before. Just rushing your prayer, not contemplating on anything that you say, planning for your future for 30, 40 years ahead, and then you discover that the salah is, is over when the Imam says, Allah, so, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. No, you are now praying the prayer of Prophet Muhammad that he used to tell Bilal, Arihna biha ya Bilal, which means comfort us with it, Bilal. What does it mean? It means that there are two types of prayers. There's a prayer that comforts you, and there's a prayer that you are comforted from. The prayer that you're comforted from is this one, that you keep looking in your watch, and you say, oh my God, there's only five minutes left for Maghrib. Let's quickly catch Asr. And then you pray Asr, and then all of a sudden, and then when, you, when you're done, you say, oh, alhamdulillah. We're comforted from Asr. But the prayer that comforts you is the one that you keep waiting for it. You keep looking in your watch. Ten minutes left. Five minutes left. Two minutes left. One minute left. Go ahead, Bilal, comfort us. So you are waiting for, your, for the meeting with Allah. You're waiting for the time when you will be able to stand up before Allah and speak to Him and talk to Him and ask Him everything that you want and ask him anything that you need and complain to him from what's happening in this life. And you say, Allahu Akbar, and you rise, and then Allahu Akbar again, and you prostrate again. What is Allahu Akbar? <laughs> Allahu Akbar, actually, when translators translated, they translated to, Allah is great. And sometimes, Allah is the greatest. It is neither Allah is great nor Allah is the greatest. It is Allah is greater. But some translators tell you, but this will be an incomplete sentence. So we can't translate it like that. Well, in Arabic too, it is an incomplete sentence. Allahu Akbar means Allah is greater. Greater than what? So the issue is Allahu Akbar is an incomplete sentence which is completed with a situation. If you are in war, you say, Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater. It means greater than this enemy. When you are in your salah, you say, Allahu Akbar, greater than the shaitan who's trying to distract you in order to make you pray the old prayers that you used to pray before. No. So Allahu Akbar here is a weapon in your salah that you use against Satan whenever he tries to come and distract you and tell you, rush your prayer quickly. You have to do this, you have to do that, you have to go here, and you have to go, to go there. Allahu Akbar. It's like a weapon that you're using against Satan, against the shaitan. And so on. And then you stand up and you continue and you start another rak'ah, another circuit of prayer. Again, you recite Al-Fatiha with contemplation. Again, you recite another surah with contemplation. You bow down and you say, Subhana Rabbi al azim glory be to my, to, to, to my Lord, the, the greatest, with contemplation. You, Sharia talks to you. Khushur of Salah, the consciousness of Allah, talks to you with your own tongue and tells you, Allah at this moment will hear to those who praise Him. So very happily, you will incarnate again in your body and you say, glory be to Allah. All praises be to Allah. And, and then you fall on, your, on the floor, prostrating on the floor again and you say, 
سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى سبحان ربي الأعلى Glory be to Allah the highest and then you sit and you start concluding the meeting like the meeting started with a greeting it has to end with a greeting so you greet Allah التحيات لله والصلوات والطيبات Greetings be to Allah and all the prayers and all the good things السلام عليك أيها النبي ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah is allowing you to greet Prophet Muhammad as if he is watching you praying right now to be happy to see you praying السلام عليك أيها النبي which means uh, peace be upon you O Prophet of Allah ورحمة الله وبركاته and all the mercy and the blessings of Allah السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين Peace be upon us and all the righteous servants of Allah who are praying with you in your circle that you can see them next to you. We said they are maybe in China or in Denmark, maybe they are on a boat or a mountain, but Allah is allowing you to greet them in the end of your prayer, in the, before you conclude your meeting with him. Okay? And then you renew the pledge of allegiance with Allah by saying, أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is the servant and the messenger of Allah. And then you do the dua of concluding your prayer. But the adab or the etiquettes of dua of invocation is to start your dua with the the dua which is always accepted. Even if a non-Muslim says it, which is the dua for Prophet Muhammad, and this is as-salatu ala nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that you make dua for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the best way is the as-salat al-Ibrahimiya, which is by saying, "Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama sallayt ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim, wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fi al-'alamin inna kahmidu majid." It means, uh, Oh Allah, may all the blessings be upon uh, Muhammad and the descendants of Muhammad, like you blessed Ibrahim and the descendants of Ibrahim. And then you ask Allah for whatever you want. You ask Allah that uh, you ask Allah refuge from Satan, from uh, uh, hellfire. You ask Allah refuge from the uh, uh, turbulence of the uh, uh, false Messiah, and you ask Allah uh, 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 refuge from the turbulence of this life, and then you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and welcome back to planet Earth from this beautiful journey where you ascended yourself, you ascended and started to, and, and, and was communicating for the past. 10 minutes, 15 minutes with Allah, communicating with the, with the highest, with the greatest, with the most merciful. And you welcome, you're welcome back on planet Earth to continue your work and to continue your life while you are feeling weaker and stronger at the same time. Weaker because you face Allah five times every day, so you are not going to uh, do any uh, injustices to anyone you are not going to wrong anyone. At the same time, you're feeling stronger because you are able to meet Allah five times every day and stand before him and ask him for whatever, for whatever you want. So you feel like you are strong enough that no one else can humiliate you and you will not be accepting humiliation or taking any injustices anymore. You can stand up for your rights. You can stand up for justice because you are strong enough because you are powered by Allah. I wish that Allah accepts from you in Ramadan and uh, after Ramadan all the good deeds, especially your fasting and especially your prayers. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.